local mission is going to be very expensive task. At, at least in your work environment, the job server will have high memory, so it is fine. But even it is not suggested. Why do you want to monitor 50,000 records at a time? The purpose of debugger is when you have these kind of rejects, you want to go and monitor. So you can always uh, select these options. Exit the debugger when the job is finished. You don't want to exit it automatically, so you don't do it. Because when there is a 50,000 record, when the job is actually in progress when loading, you set up a breakpoint, then you can choose this option. Without setting up a breakpoint, you don't want it to choose this exit debugger when the job is finished. If you choose a breakpoint in the filter condition, yes, check this box so that it, it will automatically exit without asking you. And print all trace messages. If you click on this, the job will run for more time because here is an example I can give. If you are if you are asked to move from a place to place, let us say from your we will take an example of a nice place like our college. If you are asked to go from your class to your hostel room, the distance will be maybe 500 meters. But if someone gives you some extra work saying for every meter can you go and mark or for every 10 steps you uh, you move, why don't you put a flag there? It is the same way when you say print all trace messages. It will try to expand the log. It will try to say each record, how much time it took, how much time, where it is, every small information about it. It will be more kind of a uh, debugging option. Let us run, uh, say print all trace messages and run the same job. You will see there is a difference in the log. And go to trace actually, you have more options. Go to trace. Yeah, the second tab. Here, if you have default options, the trace rows, you are not doing tracing option at the row level, but set the first value as yes. So the same job consumes more time. Yeah. So if you say trace session, at least it is at the session level statistic. But when you say yeah, double click there, it will it will uh, it will turn as yes. Yeah, double click on that. Yeah. Okay. So you have to select that and make it as yes. I think you can uh, select the name there. Yeah, trace rows. Yeah, select and say yes. Yeah, say okay and run the job. I mean, this I can actually show on my mission too because this all should work. Only the debugger was not working. If you monitor backend guys, each and every record which is getting generated will have detailed information. You see how much log it is generating, which consumes lot of memory and the performance will go down. But this is required when you want it to debug record by record. You want it to monitor what each each and every line has, what kind of data it has. You can monitor actually. It, give you, it will give you 100 different statistics. So yeah, you can stop and exit the debugger now. If you go and compare the logs, you will see what is the difference. Let us, uh, uh, can you go into logs, Ashok? Yeah, monitor log. We were running the JB flat file load. Can you click on the JB flat file load? These are the recent runs which we had. So this is the first run. You see the log is very small there. Only 10 lines or 20 lines. Uh, click on the second one, Ashok. Yeah, the... Yeah, even click on the next one. Uh, the last one will be the latest actually if you wanted to click on that. Yeah. If you see here, you read through that, it gives you each and everything what is happening in the job server. Uh, scroll up and down. Now it is in the maybe thousand uh, lines are being displaying there. Yeah, move up, you'll see a record wise tracing. For every record, there was a trace. So if there were 10 records, there are 10 traces. If 1000 records, there will be 1000 uh, definite traces at, at a very detailed level. And go into the second tab, monitor please. Yeah, uh, not here. No, 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 here, here. Okay, okay. Now I'm saying on the right hand side, you see the bulb and uh, a graph symbol. Can you click on here? Yeah. Yeah. So these are the same statistics. It is only nine records. You look at these statistics, it is going to be the same. 
but the number of steps has increased. Now it has five steps here. Can you click on the previous one, Nasho? Any one of the previous log there? Yeah. Yeah, go up and click on it. And click on the monitor again. The same five steps are, be, are being used, but the trace log will be more. So try to understand it, guys. What we are trying to do is we are you, we are measuring twice, measure measure hundred times be, before you cut. That's what we are trying to do. So if there is any data issue, any performance issue, we are going to monitor the data like this very closely and then fix it. And uh, thank you, Ashok. Uh, before I I I before I end the session on Ashok's mission, is there any questions around the debugger and the filtering option? Do you understand what we did with the debugger? Go ahead. Go ahead. Correct. Okay. No, if you want it to monitor all one lakh, the purpose is uh, is not going to be uh, uh, survived there. You will have to certainly put a filter condition because out of one lakh, you have two rows that are getting rejected every day, right? So you will put a filter so that the debugger will take only those two records. It will stop there. When you put a filter and a breakpoint, it will take that particular record and stops there. But the entire debugger, you will have all these 500 records getting loaded. But if you set it to 1 lakh, it will get all the 1 lakh records into memory, which is very expensive task. So don't make it 1 lakh. Still keep it only 500. And if you put a filter, certainly it will get that particular record. If you want it to go and put in the query, you can also put in the where class saying extract that particular record saying where first name is equal to Richard so that it will get only that that particular record you don't want to monitor entire entire one lakh records and then fix the issue right you may have to take a good record a bad record and compare against each other to see what is different between them. so most probably we will put a certain filter and then we will have 10 more uh, different records which are good records and we will compare with good record and bad record so that you know but do not increase it to one lakh the job will run forever even for even it can run if it is your local mission it may take even two to three hours to get that one lakh record into your buffer it is going to use a cache memory there okay any other questions are regarding the breakpoint and uh, and uh, filter guys okay so thank you Ashok for uh, providing me an immediate solution or else I should have spent uh, a night to debug what is happening in there. And I'm going to take back my presentation. Uh, I mean, I will become the presenter now. So thank you very much for that. And whatever the job you saw, it is being built by uh, myself in my earlier uh, earlier. A training session guys so I, I am aware of what we tried to do there so it is the same job uh, he was using so I'm, I, I got disconnected from your team viewer Ashok so the next thing as per the as per what we see in the tutorial is dimensions from XML file we can always do this but let me hold on to uh, to this uh, particular point and show you more transformations this is a uh, this is the place where we are going to learn more transformations, which are very essential for us at this point. Mm. Oh no. Uh, why am I trying to end the entire meeting? Oh, you, Ashok, still it shows you as presenter. Uh, okay, I'll have to make myself as presenter. One second. Okay, yeah, now I got the presentation right and uh, uh, do everyone see my screen guys? Perfect. So what we are going to do now is 
let us deviate from what is given in the tutorial. We will come and work on XML as a source. But I wanted to show you something very important. If you remember slowly changing dimensions from our earlier discussions, let us build a slowly changing dimension type 2 here. So that you know how, how a data warehouse looks like and we will make use of few transformations by us. So I will keep this as, as sacred as it is. I am not going to change this. Instead, I will create one more data flow. And here I will show you a beautiful option that you need not write the entire data flow again. You can replicate it. If you want to reuse the same data flow, same logic, right click and say replicate. It will create a copy of it. This copy I am going to rename as uh, uh, customer dim type 2. First let us do type 1 and we will do type 2. Because type 1 also requires some kind of a date indicator. Uh, type 1 is no, uh, it doesn't require actually. So I will do type 2 but I will explain what is a type 1 and type 2 and then do it. So here I named it as type 2. So I am taking it, dragging it here. Just to have a comparison for you I will keep it. And I will not use the original customer dim table. Instead, I will create one more table called customer dim type 2. So, I will use a template table for now. So, it is cust underscore dim underscore type 2. So, if any one of you have followed my sessions, I am curious to know what is a type 2 dimension, guys. So, one of you, take the chance. Come on, present yourself saying, this is what I learned from the earlier session of data warehouse. If I don't get an answer from you, from any one of you, then it is a bad remark on me. So take the take the opportunity. Tell me what is a type two dimension now? Yes, Sri Devi, go ahead. Perfect. Yeah, what she said is certainly correct. Can you expand it little more, uh, Sri Devi, by giving an example? And how do we generally uh, come across a situation where we uh, we want a type 2 dimension. I also explained it why we need a type 2 dimension. Yeah, uh, to give you a little more understanding on what is a type 2 is, the example I used to use is uh, I remember I used Sri Devi as example for the type 2 dimension. So Sri Devi moved from east to west. She stayed uh, till 2009 in east coast and she moved to west coast in 2010. My data warehouse will be capable of, of actually monitoring that her address change. The customer address is very important for me. But in the legacy system I won't be storing history of Sri Devi, her address and everything. All I will have is the current address. Because if you go to a Bank of America online banking, you can keep your current address, but it won't maintain your old address and current address. But the data warehouse has that capacity. And the important things we will have to understand is, the first address is valid for a certain amount of time. Maybe from 2005 to 2009, Sri Devi stayed in uh, East Coast, maybe New York. After then, she moved to California, which the effective date is 2009, January 1st. And when is she going to leave California? No one knows, right? So, you will end date it with a high date saying 9999, December 31st. Uh, that is the longest term Sri Devi can live on this world. So, we will put the date as a maximum date. Unless and until uh, there is a certain requirement, they say, no, 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 don't end date it with a date. Instead, leave it open. Few of the companies doesn't want to give a date there. So they will they will keep it as an open date, they will put an empty space. But data warehouse, the performance goes uh, goes really bad if you have null values in it. So it, it is always suggested better make use of a date or a default value instead of making it as just an empty uh, empty value. I mean a null value. So uh, do you want me to recap anything on the type 2 dimension or can I go ahead and build a type 2 dimension? Guys? 